What's up, Fish Two? Bearded Bob once again. Just coming back at you with another tank. Uh, this is on my three with a sump system that I've got over here. And we're just going to talk quick about uh, these guys that are in here. Uh, so in this tank, I've got uh, Steak Endler colony that I got for, uh, that I started with uh, a pair from uh, Lucas Bretts, uh, LRBAquatics.com. Throw out there, shout out. Um, and these guys, it took a long time for them to really start producing anything. Over the last uh, two, maybe three or four months, I'm not sure of the timeline, um, but we started getting uh, some some good a good amount of babies out of this uh, out of this tank. So uh, there's some of the young ones up there. Uh, there's some males that colored up. This one's just starting to get a uh, good color on them. Same thing with that other one next to him. There's one super nice male. There he is with the spots and the steak. From what I can uh, understand from reading stuff online or whatever, refers to uh, the spotting on them. Uh, it's, you know, a foreign language or something. I'm not sure. But, you know, you could look it up. <laughs> I probably shut up before I did this. Um, Plant-wise, we've got the same. I threw a little chunk of hornwort in, in here, just kind of like I did in this tank here. And it just kind of took over and bushed out, so it's sucking up some nitrates. Um, I like that about it. Uh, it's got a couple of nice bronze crypts. I see this one's floating, so looks like uh, the roots kind of melted away. We'll have to shove that back down there and see what's going on there. Um, but it looks like I can actually split this one up into a couple of different pieces now. Uh, so maybe that's what it's doing. It's trying to find a new home. It doesn't like, whoops, sorry. It doesn't like where it's at. Um, we've got some Alteranthea Renickii uh, variation Cardinalis. Uh, these ones, they were all kind of clumped together over here and we're getting shaded out by this Christmas moss that just grows like weeds uh, in these tanks and so they, they kind of died back so I split them up into individual stems replanted them added some root tabs and some liquid fertilizer into these tanks uh, just to try to get it uh, jump started again kind of the same thing over on this side here little stems everywhere um, when I got it I got it from PetSmart as a tissue culture they have like the top thin variety uh, they're you know bagged up already ready to go all you gotta do is buy them and put them in your tanks and uh, out of all the plants that I've gotten from fish stores this one did the best until I stopped uh, fertilizing like I was it, it really does like a good dose of fertilizer I think all of these AR plants do um, and if you don't keep up on that then you know you're gonna pay the price same thing with lighting if you don't have a high enough light they're gonna pay for it this one's just a beams work uh, DA uh, full spectrum 10,000 K and it's got the blue in there and it's got you know you can kind of see the red and the green and lots of white LEDs and th that's pretty much what I have across the fish room on all of these tanks is all beams work LED lights and they work really good for growing plants and for lighting the aquariums so I just run with that um, otherwise uh, I was talking about the the, um, the moss in there the Christmas moss there it is big chunk uh, it took over the entire back end of this aquarium. I had to kind of, like every once in a while, I'll just get in there and just mash it down to the bottom again. And uh, because the bottom where it's shaded will just die out and it'll just kind of slowly fall apart. But the tops will keep growing like like big bushes here. Um, so every once in a while, if you get in there and you kind of mat everything down, it's going to make some, some mulm and stuff underneath there. Um, which is, it's good for the fish and the shrimp as far as I'm concerned. So uh let's see what else oh well the big thing in here is these uh b this blue dream colony um again the blue dreams i got last year sometime i got uh 10 of them only like six of them made it if i remember correctly and uh they, they were supposed to be straight up blue dreams i don't know if you can see the colors on that one swimming away right now there's some brown and uh, if you look around closely you'll see some that have red superman type heads like there's one two three of them right there um, there's one right oop, in the center of the frame, that red head on there. And uh, for a while I was thinking there was something wrong with them, some kind of a molting issue or uh, a type of bacteria that can get in there. But uh, I've had a few generations of these uh, and I have them in another, another tank. I'll kind of show you that another time here. And they, uh, they, they seem to keep reproducing, so I don't think there's anything wrong with them. They live to be full-size adults and then have lots of babies and those babies kind of have those uh, red spots too or brown so it is what it is so this blue dream colony um, produced quite a bit uh, that you can still see there I mean there's there's probably you know a couple hundred or so I'm kind of guesstimating uh, living in this tank this moss really does help 
hide them. Um, the big female steak handler, she will actively hunt. I've watched her. So she'll actively go out and hunt the baby shrimp and pick them off one by one. And uh, to me that's okay, a little bit of population control, plus um, she's getting some needed protein and uh, roughage and stuff too, to her diet, which in turn is giving me some more uh, steak and their babies, which was kind of the, the point of, of, these, of these tanks, you know, to have two different types of animals living in the same tank, both producing offspring, um, kind of a breeding for profit type thing in a little 10 gallon tank. <laughs> Of course, in here we've got all of the duckweed again. Um, I, I do scoop these regularly, and I'll kind of show you. Um, I So I'll take the duckweed out, I'll put it on, on something, and I'll kind of dry it out. And uh, it kind of makes uh, really good fish food. you got to get a lot of it in order to make it worthwhile. Um, and you got to make sure it dries rather quickly. You don't want to let, let it sit around and kind of rot for a few days. So get it spread out on like some kind of paper or a sheet pan from the kitchen or something like that. Dry it out really good. And then I've made I've been making this homemade fish food that I kind of feed to everybody. And I add spirulina and a couple other things to it to make it to make it worthwhile. Uh, but yeah. So anyway, duckweed, blah blah blah. Again, this one's on the automatic uh, system here too, or the sump system where uh, the water comes in, flows through the back drips down to the bottom, back into this tank, and then it goes through a matten filter, back to a pump, and then pumps back up to this tank here. Uh, let's see, I wonder what else, I wanna say there was something else I was gonna talk to, uh, talk to you about on this tank too, but eh, I can't really think of it. Again, I feed this tank pretty heavily, uh, same thing as the other ones, uh, baby brine shrimp when they hatch, frozen foods, uh, lots of different types of flake and uh, the shrimp for the most part get uh, I like this shrimp dinner they get my homemade food they get some Bacter AE small doses so I toss the spoon that comes with it and I use this little tiny spoon and I'll only use about a third of this spoon in my 10 gallon tanks once or twice a week um, again more more of this uh, Tetramin uh, tropical tablets I also got some awesome uh, food from uh, Dan Quadics. I won a little giveaway he had on Facebook. So these are nug bombs or something. And uh, you can kind of see the ingredients on there. You can definitely tell that it's uh, got the soy stuff in there too. Because when I feed uh, Snowflake or Snow Pops or whatever uh, Shrimp King does, you can see it kind of flakes apart into pieces. and. No one shrimp can just take it and just dominate it or anything like that, so. Uh, but, you know, we got some shrimp dinner, some uh, mineral junky. Um, I do feed, you know, beans and some other random stuff in there, too, into their diet. Uh, lots of uh, wafers, that kind of stuff. Uh, so they kind of get a varied mix of foods. And uh, they seem to do well on it, so I'm not going to spoil it by trying to change their food up. I also use a food called uh, Low Keys uh, Ultra Supple and all the shrimp just go nuts for it like as soon as it hits the water they're on it so once in a while uh, I'm out of it right now but once in a while we throw that in there and give them a little supplement but I think that's pretty much it uh, like I said I have another tank with a lot of the culls so whenever I find a red one I pull them out I stick them into another little five and a half gallon tank that I have and uh, that's where I'm keeping all of the Superman shrimp at um, so I guess that's it uh, till next time uh, make sure you give my th uh, videos a little thumbs up hit the subscribe button all that jazz and uh, we'll catch you on the next one peace